Right. So this is the chair in question. I picked the worst one. I have two of them. Or it's not the worst one. It's just uh, it looks a. It's a. I don't like it as much, and it's not so much a solo chair. So selling it's going to be a bit harder to do. I also think it's the more modern of the two. Um, certainly less interesting. But for whatever reason, I've selected this chair. Um, now, it's actually pretty solid. Pretty solid. We're going to take it apart, take all this off, because I know that's going to be a step one. And I need to reset at least one of the spines. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to take all the spines apart. Spines? Spines? Back things? God, I should know this. See, I stopped studying over the holiday and I need to get back on the studying train for knowing these parts so I can just use them. Um, there's a lot of parts of furniture. There's a lot to know. There's a lot of things you can know. Ah, I want to know it all. Still got time. One thing at a time. Anywho, um, let's get this boy apart. One thing I learned is that the little instruction thing, I bought one with instructions because I've never done this before. Um, that's good to know. Um, but while helpful is actually the only instructions in here for a typical seat like my other chair, um, which I guess like they're for a typical trapezoidal uh, seat shape, which this one isn't. And I've got a feeling, I've got a sneaking suspicion that this will actually be easier um because it seems like there's been more woodworking done to accommodate this seat um i've got a feeling this will actually be easier but i do need to look up a different pattern um so the time lapse i'll probably cut out me looking at my phone um i did set this in it was it's a little loose um one thing the instructions do say is that the rush is the last thing you should do so I'm also gonna try and fix this bad boy because it's a little loose to me I don't know how to fix that though I don't know if these are glued ever I don't know how that works I'm gonna do a little bit of research see what I can find and then I'll start the time lapse, so it might jump a bit. Didn't you? Okay. So, I was right. This just makes it easier, and all it does is eliminate the first little bit of weaving, because essentially this has made the pattern that the other chairs try and do um, by making this perfectly square front and back. Um, since most seats are a trapezoid shape, you sometimes, according to this instructions, have to weave it, like weave extra onto the corners so that it is a perfect square. Uh, it is perfectly squared front and back. And since it's cut in the wood um, in such a way that that's just how they made the chair, you don't have to do that first step. But the rest of it's still the same as this booklet, which is nifty. It also says that you need to repair everything before you put the chair together, which is not inherently true. Although I will sand out, hmm, this is gonna be me thinking for a second. Sorry, editing me. Um, I'm kind of curious. I wonder what this stuff is when it gets old that just comes right off. It's interesting that it's a different color than the wood beneath it, because when you put on like a shellac, it is clear, and you just see the stained wood beneath it. But when you scrape off this stuff, maybe it's a stain. Oh, it's like a... Oh, they probably put... That probably wasn't a clear shellac they put on there. It must not have been, because I've scraped off clear stuff before. That's interesting. I know you can stain 
the lacquer and make put paints in it like a dye. I've just never put it together that that's what is happening for a lot of these things. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Another thing for me to sand. Lots of sanding today. We'll see what I get done. Damn. Necessity is the something, something of innovation. And you know, as I sit here spending a very long amount of time sanding down a single leg of this chair, I think about all the work I do when I'm at working at a carpentry gig for a company I work for out in Jersey. Um, how quickly we go through I mean how we have its deadline to meet and yeah the, we, we plan out the best we can the how long we think stuff's gonna take and move out for all the things we never know are gonna happen that go wrong like they do on every project but I mean if I was working out there I would take this whole thing it, honestly for sanding it it would probably be faster to no, it wouldn't be. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm just thinking about how I could make this more efficient. And then I stop myself and think, why do I need to make it more efficient? The answer is only that then I can work on other projects that I have sooner. But I don't have a deadline. I don't have a timeline to like make me feel like I need to. And I don't know if that's good or bad. That's sort of what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know if I should be striving to do more things or if it's just a money-based thing that drives you to do stuff quicker or more efficiently or what I, yeah, I don't know. However you slice it, sanding this takes a long time. It's going to take a long time. Hmm. I don't know. Figured it out. Been sort of feeling weird about, been sort of feeling weird about doing all this stuff, carpentry and all that. I've been having a really hard time knowing what I want to do with my life. <laughs> what, a quarter life crisis or something that's a new thing? I know I don't have to know, um, but I want to know. I want to know what I want to do with my life. We're a couple steps behind where I feel like I should be. But I've really enjoyed this woodworking. I've been trying to figure out what it is for me. I mean, I'm a carpenter for my most of my money. Anyway, certainly now when theater's not happening. And I, there's more hours at work I can be doing and I'm just trying to figure out why I'm doing all this stuff. What's it for? It's school. I figured out. I do all this stuff down here. It's, it's like school. It's the same part of my brain that wants to learn new things, strives to make an impact on some community somewhere, on some scientific body on some YouTube channel or what have you, the creator community, the maker community, the antique community, I don't know. I have a desire to leave an impact on the world 
and this is fulfilling that desire. That's what it's doing. What it's different then is fun. It's different than playing video games. It's different than hanging out with my friends. It's not that part. I've been treating it since it's on my own time, since it's at home, since it's not, since it's somewhat professional. I've been treating it, but I, I, I've been treating it like it was fun. And it is fun. And I, I, it is fun. I do enjoy doing it, but that's not the main function of it. And I've been feeling, it's been feeling disingenuous. It's been feeling like, why can't I cut? I haven't been able to get up out of bed in the morning to do it on time. I haven't been able to wake up early to do it. Because I've been thinking about it like, I, 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 want, I don't want to wake up. But like, I, I don't have to do this thing. No. It's, it's like school. You got to get up in the morning, go to your class, do your thing, learn your techniques, your skills, so that someday, way on down the line, you can graduate and do something really cool. I hope that's going to be one of my projects, my senior project, my, ah, uh, who the heck am I kidding? I'm a freshman at carpentry. Well, <laughs> I say that and I think back to a time when I had someone in here, I was trying to teach how to use the chop saw and whoo, I was frightened for her fingers. I'm a sophomore of carpentry. How about that? Um, I did decide to slightly take this chair apart. Um, I hit a fair few times on the base of it. Could only get one of the legs to pop out. I'm going to see this back piece here is broken off. I really don't want to have to disassemble the whole chair. I'm going to eh, I'm going to disassemble the whole chair by the end of it. I know I'm going to. I can feel it in my bones. Which definitely means I'm not going to get to uh, wrapping it today, which is too bad. You know, if I <laughs> I picked this one because I thought it'd be easier, um, but I'm gonna have to take the other chair apart too, so it doesn't super matter. And by gonna have to, I don't have to do any of this stuff. I'm gonna learn how to. I'm gonna figure out how to. We're gonna get some knowledge up in the us. I don't know why I feel like I have to, like, mark my swear words. I guess I am putting this on YouTube, and if I swear too much, I'll never get money for it. But this isn't really a money-making thing, is it? I think parts of this speech I'll use, I don't know. Any schmoop. There's something very satisfying about sanding. It's just like, okay, here we go. We're in a nice, clean spot. Sanding that top was really nice. I'm looking forward to finishing that piece. I'm looking forward to seeing it done. Is really the is really what I mean when I say that. <sighs> but for now, so I can listen to my music. Although I'm not making money, I could just play it. Well, I'm going to go to time lapse anyway, because you don't want to listen to me babble for the next hour. And Lord knows I'll do it. Man, I hope there's a freeze frame of me hitting myself in the face. <laughs> oh, fudge. I was actually worried I poked a hole through my cheek for a second there. Um, I'm definitely sticking with this as a school. I like that. I'm learning. Uh, and one stupid thing that I have learned once again is when you are yanking on something that is stuck, 
You do not yank on that thing towards your face over it. It's a simple lesson. And yet it's one of those lessons you seem to have to learn more than just once. Oh. <laughs> it's a learning experience. Okay, so now that this is already in step one, this is just an example. Cut a length of brush four feet long. Brush. Cut a length of brush four feet long. Um, well, I'm six feet tall, so that's how I will measure it. Four feet long, that's about there. Well, so, never done this before, as I'm sure you can tell, it is not going well. I can see why people don't like doing this. Um, I think I'll be able to get a seat out of it. But it has certainly not been woven very tightly. And partially, and by partially I mean almost entirely, that is because of the curves on the edges here. When you try and tighten it, it just slides down into the curve, and it doesn't tighten. Which means that I, I, I don't quite understand how I was supposed to do it, or how I am supposed to do it. That's what I don't quite get. Well, 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 well. For now, I'm done with this for the day. I've sanded it down. Worst comes to worst, I can always just make the thing that can set on top of here, or set in here. Right oh so got some stuff in the mail. Lots of stuff. I'm pretty sure I know what this is, which is exciting because that's a project I've been wanting to get moving. Um click this on, click this on. Nice. 
some dowel rods, which are going to be great for this cat, this vice stand. I'm very excited to get that going and assembled. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to attach it, although I have some ideas. Hopefully I don't split any of these. Um, but cool. So I got these dowels going for me. I also got my first painting sheet, which looks like it'll be big enough for the seat, but I'm going to have to buy two more panels of this and I'll make sure to measure for the back of that white powder stool. Um, so that's going to be an interesting experience. Um, I now can take that apart now that I have this. I mean, I could have taken it apart before, but I can get moving on that. Um, it also means I can start doing more stripping. There's a lot of projects to do, and naturally, I'm about to run out of time in which to do them. Um, I also have brought over another one of these chairs um, that I've been doing for the Millers. Um, they're just wobbly. They need to be taken apart and re-glued. Pretty easy. Um, and I have this weaving to do, which I really dislike. I'm really not a huge fan. Um, I can see why people are not often trying, like they don't really want to do it. Um, but I think I'll look up a quick YouTube video and see if there's a trick to it that I don't know yet. I'm sure there is. Okay, so what you watch me learn, <laughs> two things I didn't realize. Um, one, you can use staples to keep it in instead of those annoying little pins, which is great. Um, didn't think about that. Also, the fiber rush needs to be wet, which is what's going to help keep it on these curved corners and help that work. So I've got a couple little things here to help me get the fiber rush um, wet and damp and keep it that way. Um, but other than that, everything else I was doing correctly, other than the fact that the tension is, a, the, you have to keep it the whole time. Um, I'm gonna get a little wooden chisel, a little wooden wedge or something. I'll probably just use a scrap piece of wood um, and my little hammer. Um, and we'll get this going right after I change over my laundry. Nice. Right. So, that looks like it's supposed to, from a distance. As a props person, that's usually my first step, making it look good from 10 feet away, or if you're just passing by, you'd be like, that's nice. So that's making me feel great. Um, you'll note I did not finish the piece. I did not stain or uh, add any stuff. A lot of the places said that this gets brittle and weak when it's stained, but I have a couple other, the other chair I have, it is, it has been stained. 
and I like that look better than the contrasting colors. So I'm going to go ahead and when I stain this, apply a light coat of it. Just a very thin wash of stain to this when I seal this whole thing up, um, which I can now do. Um, really getting the brush wet was the whole thing. That was the one thing I really did not know. Um, you can see that it's not super perfect. There are some gaps. Um, I'll move the camera. And underneath it's pretty rough. Um, I have a fair few large knots that did not hide very well because I didn't put them in the right place. Here, let me get a better look at. You can see upon closer inspection that there's some imperfections, there's some openings. I can wiggle and adjust them to make them a little better. But on the whole, just looking at it, even looking at it from standing height, it is very passable for the first time I've ever woven a rush sheet. A rush seat. Very passable for the first time I've ever woven a rush seat. Um, so that's great. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the chair back together, glue it up. Um, yeah. Well, that's annoying. The rod on this piece broke, which I, it broke neatly. So I'm gonna clamp it here. I'm gonna put actually a, I think I'll put a, a C clamp on it, but it does mean I'm gonna have to sand out. I put glue in all these holes and was getting it on there. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem because these have a fair amount of flex in them. So I think I can still leave that set as it is, but now I have to wait for this to dry before I can before I can glue the rest of it together. So that's just the way it goes. Think you can get a project done today? And the answer is in fact no. You will not be getting that project done today. Which is just kind of annoying. But, I'm still very proud of that seat. Right, so video is going to be different. Um, been lurking a lot on what I thought was time lapse. Apparently, I just recorded four hours of footage. Um, the magics of working with a camera. But, not in. Ah, good to know. See, I've had a lot of trouble putting this back on. Namely, this joint here, which you can see has come free. Um, this kit breaking. I glued it once, broke again. When I was trying to bend it to fix in, just kept breaking. My initial thought, this is my first thought of a little bit of a janky fix, but one that I think would work. Since I know the way this is broken, I think I'm going to drill a hole and put a dowel in it. Drill a hole and put a dowel in it. Because this side is solid. This side is in. This side is not moving. This side is all good. This side is not. 
I think if I put a dowel in it, that will get it to where it needs to go. But I'll look up how to do it properly first. to be several coats of paint and I finally put this chair together stained it I did put stain on the the uh, the brush which you're not supposed to do um, but I know what it does it just makes it I'm gonna have to do it again in the next couple of years but again this is not a chair I need to deal with for another couple of years this is an apartment chair um, but first coat of stain on this which I'll sand down a little bit and put a nicer finish on just to get some more color back on the wood, see what it's gonna look like. I'm quite pleased, finally got a chair together. Finally completing a project. <laughs> um, you'll note that this would take me forever to complete any of my other projects, but then this one that I have a set due date for, wham, bam, slam, all done in a day. <laughs> it's funny how you work, it's funny how people work like that. Very nice, in its spot. Doesn't match, but Sort of fits better with that little corner shelf. It's gonna be well used. <laughs> 